we have here is a resonance tube. We've got a speaker on one end, and inside the tube we've got styrofoam balls. They're really light, so when I send compressions of air, they can go down to this end and reflect, and if I play the right frequencies, resonant frequencies, I can get the next compression to meet up with a reflected compression in the same spot every time. And then we'll have resonance, and in that spot we, we call that uh, constructive interference, when it adds up the compression. And we'll also have spots that are destructive. Now it won't work for every frequency. <laughs> As you can see, some of them we get resonance. Isn't it? And each one's a little different. So I'm going to try to describe for you why we get a resonance phenomenon when a tuning fork is placed over an open or closed tube of a particular length. So first of all, we got to decide or understand what's happening with a tuning fork. When it vibrates, it's shaking back and forth, kind of like a pendulum. So it's going to be sending compressions of air. This little orange thing represents compressions of air in actually every direction. When it's in front of a tube, it's going to send a compression down the tube. That compression is then going to reflect back and on its way out, if it so happens to be coming on its way out at the same exact time that the tuning fork is on its backswing, then it's going to reinforce the natural frequency of the tuning fork. The next thing I want you to think about is the motion of the tuning fork, and think about what one full cycle is. Now as this swings back and forth, let's think about a full cycle as quarters. So the first quarter we swing forward, second quarter we swing back to where we started, third quarter we swing all the way to the other side, and then back to the middle. So that would be a full wavelength, one oscillation going from the middle all the way back down to the other side, and then back through the middle the same direction that we started. Now what's that going to look like when we look at our tube? So if I want a reflected wave to come back and help me push this tuning fork out, it's going to have to be going from stage 1 to stage 2, because at stage 2 it's ready to be pushed back out. So that's only a half of a cycle. So I need to go a distance of a half of a wavelength. So inside the tube, I really only have to go a depth of one quarter of a wavelength. That's from crest to equilibrium, not even to trough. And then that would be a reflection point. I've used these black markers to indicate um, where a reflection should occur. So let's start with a crest, and let's come down to a place where we would reflect. And we'll come back, and now I'm at a trough. As I'm leaving, that's a half of a wavelength. Now, here's something that I learned from a student that uh, he told me, there's a rule that this, uh, these reflections follow, and it's called you gotta leave. Like, we have the shape of a U here, and that's got to go out of the tube. Let's see if that works to get other resonance points. So, the next resonance point that I would get would not just be if I go down and back and get helped back out, but I could send this one down, I could do a whole nother cycle, come back and then get some help on the way out after my second cycle. So when is that going to occur? With my first trip down and back was a quarter of a wavelength and I need another full cycle. I'm going to have to go down get reflected back. That's going to be another full wavelength. I'll need another half of a wavelength of tube right there. Let's try to apply the you gotta leave rule. Turns out we reflect back and it works and we come back out the other side with a U. And if I do this process again, I'll have another half of a wavelength to go here too. So it seems to me that we have, um, at this point, just additional integer half wavelengths. So let's make an expression 
for L is going to equal 2n minus 1 all over 4 lambda, where L is the uh, resonant links that will work for the tube. Now, similarly, we can do the same thing with open tubes. Um, instead of sending a wave that bounces back and helps push us back out, we're really sending a compression that just leaves and keeps going just in time for the next one to come through. So when is that going to happen? Let's... You gotta leave. We've got a half of a wavelength here. And if I want that to happen again, if I want to get to my next you gotta leave scenario, I'm going to need, looks like, another half of a wavelength. And same deal if I want to keep going, another half of a wavelength. So I keep going up by um, multiples of half wavelengths. So then my formula for an open tube would be L is equal to N lambda divided by 2. A little bit easier of a formula there. Okay, so take a look at these two formulas. Those will tell you the lengths of the tube needed for frequencies to provide resonance in a tube, either open or closed. What if instead of having going to just one tuning fork and several number different tube lengths, we have one tube length, and we want to think about how many different frequencies of tuning forks can resonate to that. So here I've drawn a model for um, the blue tuning fork will represent a low frequency, and the green will be a medium frequency, and the red will be a higher frequency. Um, now, for the blue one to work, since that's the slow one, that'll be the first harmonic or fundamental harmonic. And that's going to um, just be going down and back on that same one-half cycle we mentioned earlier. The green frequency, the next harmonic upwards, is going to vibrate a little bit faster than the blue one, so it's going to have enough time after it sends that first um, wave down, it's going to have enough time for it to do a separate oscillation back and forth and just in time to get help on the way out and then finally the red one it's going to do the same thing except it's going to vibrate one additional time back and forth so down and back down and back down and back we apply the you gotta leave rule. One, two, three, down, down, down. And the blue is going to be the fundamental harmonic. It's going to come down and back like that. So think about how these paths differ. The blue wavelength is going to be three times bigger than the green wavelength, and then it's also five times bigger than the red wavelength. So the fundamental harmonic, we'll call f naught, is then followed by something that's three times as much, 3f naught, and then followed by 5f naught. So it sort of keeps on going. I bet you can predict the next... Likewise, open tube frequencies. The first one that's going to work will look something like this, followed by the next one will go one additional time, and then red of course. In the open tube frequencies we get F naught, then 2 F naught, then 3 F naught, and it just goes up by integer numbers. So let's review both of those. So if you have a closed tube on one end, your harmonic frequencies are F naught, followed by 3 F naught, 5 F naught, 7 F naught, and so forth. And in your open tube, they are just integer multiples of F naught.